Michael Nurker, and I was one of the scientists once hired by him in 1998, during those times when we can hire a lot of scientists once. And I really appreciate um, the support and encouragement over the years that Michael provided, which allowed me to work on several different MHD problems, both in the interior and the, the corona. Um, I really appreciate it. So today I will be um, giving an overview of some of the work I've been doing um, modeling, um, MHD modeling of CME initiation and prominence eruption. So um, C coronal mass ejections are large scale ejections of magnetic flux and plasma from the lower corona into interplanetary space. And it's observed to be often accompanied by pr filament prominence eruptions, as well as um, large tube ribbon flares, which are manifestations of the magnetic reconnection and heating um, accompanied with the uh, eruption. Filament and prominences are often observed as the um, CME precursor structures. Um, when observed above the limb, nearly along their lens, they often show these kind of a dark cavity surrounding the prominence under the bright helmet dome in both white light and UV observations in certain in the hot wavelength channels. Um, it's been suggested by BC Low and others that the uh, cavity surrounding the prominence corresponds to a twisted magnetic flux rope structure, longitudinal extended flux rope structure containing helical field lines, as shown in this cross section here, with the prominence supported in the dip of the helical field lines. So my the modeling I describe in the following are mostly considering uh, magnetic flux rope as the CME precursor structures. So one of the main mechanisms that can lead to the loss of equilibrium of a magnetic flux rope in the corona is the so-called torus instability. And it's illustrated in this, um, analytically in this cons idealized construction of a coronal force-free magnetic field, which contains a magnetic flux rope produced by this toroidal current ring. And along with uh, several artificial subsurface virtual sources, which produce uh, a potential field to confine this coronal flux rope. And the force balance is between the so-called hoop force, which is basically the self-repulsive force of this toroidal current, and balanced by the inward confining force produced by the potential field, produced by these sources that um, act on the current. And this force balance will lose, um, will become unstable to outward exp expansion of the toroidal ring if the, uh, the decline with height, when it reaches a critical height where the decline, oh, sorry. When the decline of the potential field becomes too steep, such that the, the decrease of the um, hoop force becomes slower compared to the decrease of the confining force and the equilibrium is lost. And this happens, it's found when the decay rate of the potential field defined by this decay index is greater than 1.5 for a circular current ring. So to model the um, loss of equilibrium and eruption of a 3D coronal flux rope, um, MHD simulations have been carried out. And I, early on, I have carried out uh, MHD simulations with highly simplified thermodynamic treatment, focusing on the evolution of the magnetic field and assume that the Lorentz force dominate the dynamics. So here is an example, isothermal set of isothermal MHD simulations in a spherical wedge domain given here. And the domain is initially um, consists of a static isothermal atmosphere um, with a pre-existing potential arcade field produced by these two bipolar bands. And at the low boundary, I imposed kinematically the slow emergence of a twisted magnetic torus for a period of time, after which the emergence stopped and the field lines are rigidly anchored to build up a coronal flux rope structure. And I carried out a set of simulations that um, where I imposed the the flux emerging over different time, different amount of time, so that different amount of the twisted magnetorus get transported into the corona, and I follow the subsequent evolution. So shown here is a comparison of two simulations where um, the flux emergence imposes slightly longer on the right case, and then um, the flux rope build up compared to the left, and then they, they both set, settle into a quasi-static rise after the emergence stopped, until the one on the right which has slightly more twist transport into the corona, reaches a critical height and erupts. 
while the ones on the left um, doesn't reach the critical height before it uh, starts to shrink down quasi-statically because of the dissipation of the current binding numerical diffusion. So you see, it seems that the, there's, a significant, there's a critical height at which the flux rope needs to reach for, for it to set, develop the dynamic eruption, consistent with the torus instability idea. So shown here are all these uh, simulations, set of simulations with different um, amount of twist of the toroidal flux rope being tor magnetic torus being transported into the corona. And shown here are the, uh, the, for all the cases, they all settles into a period of quasi-static rise with very, oops, with um, slow rise speed and gradual de decrease of um, magnetic energy and magnetic helicity because of the uh, numerical dissipation due to reconnection. And, uh, and then they all eventually, several of them reach the critical height at different times and then dynamic eruption takes place at different times depending on when they reach the critical height and with sub, uh, rapid de de ma magnetic energy release, but the magnetic helicity remain nearly constant for all the cases. And shown here, I plotted the uh, acceleration uh, for all the cases as a function of height, and then you can see that they all collapse pretty much into a curve, which, where shows, that, which shows that the uh, onset of eruption uh, depends on when they reach this critical height, which turns out to be at the height where the potential field decline rate reaches about 1.7, which is above the critical limit of, of 1.5 for the onset of the torus instability. So roughly consistent with that picture. And the kink is the twist of the, the, all these cases are much smaller than the critical limit for the onset of the, the kink instability. So these are consistent with the onset of the torus instability. So here is a movie which shows the evolution of the magnetic field lines and also isosurface of uh, high current density uh, during the quasi-static rise phase leading up to eruption, we see the formation of an inverse S sigmoid shaped current layer under, <coughs> underlying the flux rope and uh, um, reconnection in this uh, current sheet gradually reduce the tether, uh, basically tether cutting type of reconnection, re gradually reduce the anchoring of the flux rope allowing it to rise to the critical height and then it, dynamic eruption takes place. To understand where um, current sheet tends to form as, as seen in the simulation. We resort to the theory of quasi cybertrics layers as developed by these authors, which is basically uh, identified so-called QSLs, quasi cybertrics layer, which are regions in the magnetic volume where the connect magnetic field line connectivity to the line type surface undergoing a rapid change, a large change, um, as identified by this so-called squashing factor Q computed by from fuel line mapping, it basically um, measures the deformation of elementary flux tube as it's mapped from one end to the other, how much a circular cross section is squashed as it mapped to the other end into a very highly squashed ellipse in both ways. So they, they are basically, QSL are boundaries of um, magnetic field with very distinct regions of different conductivities and therefore different dynamic behavior. So therefore, uh, under perturbations, current layer tends to form along the QSLs. So here is a comparison of the uh, uh, computed Q factors, this squashing factor, um, and the, the current density we found in the simulation. And then um, for the two, showing two cross sections, a vertical central cross section shown here, and a horizontal cross section through the current layer. And we see that indeed the uh, strong current layers tend to form along so-called QSLs, um, where field connectivity undergoes a significant transition. And also the, uh, the, form, the current layer that forms um, has a inverse, has a sigmoid shape, but this left-handed twisted flux rope, which may explain the tendency to see these extra sigmoids in um, pre-eruption active regions. So here, um, Chatterjee and um, who is a postdoc here, and I, we, we both together worked on a, another further simulation where we emerged a more compact and highly twisted um, magnetic torus into the pre-existing arcade field. And we, we, we imposed a, a continuous Im emergence. And as a result, we find a repeated formation of kink unstable flux ropes in the corona, which um, undergoes eruption 
and develop irrepeated magnetic energy releases. And we find that the, the following eruption tend to be more energetic than the previous one, um, which is explain the, uh, and also the, the following eruptions can tend to catch up with the previous one because the previous eruption tend to open up the, the coronal field, so precondition the following ones, allowing it to catch up with the previous one, forming these so-called um, cannibal CMEs. So recently, I've um, carried out, we've carried out image simulations uh, um, of coronal flux ropes with a somewhat more sophisticated treatment of thermodynamics to allow for the uh, prominence, formation of prominence compensation. So as Ma Matthias mentioned here, we solved the uh, semi-relativistic image equations, but with the energy equation explicitly including the non-adiabatic effects of the corona, which include um, the, the following effect, which include the uh, fuel line thermal conduction and op optically thin radiative cooling, which can drive the which can drive radiative instabilities to produce prominence compensation, and an empirical coronal heating that simp simply depend upon height. So for these simulations, we um, are carried out in the spherical wedge domain, given here, which extends from about one to, to from one to about 11 solar radii, with a latitudinal range width of about 30 degrees and um, a very large longitudinal extent, about 150 degrees, to accommodate a very long um, flux rope. And we've, in this domain, we first initialized a quasi-steady quasi -steady coronal streamer solution uh, with an ambient solar wind, which is accelerated and heated by this uh, simple empirical coronal heating to obtain a helmet dome configuration. And for the low boundary thermodynamic conditions, um, it's, it's, fixed, it's fixed at the transition region height with a fixed temperature of 500 thousand K, and, but with an adjustable base pressure, um, as described in Withbro, which is directly proportional, try to drive that pressure to, to be proportional to, to, a val to a value that's proportional to the thermal conduction. So sort of crudely mimic the effect of chromospheric evaporation. And also, admit we impose at the low boundary the emergence of a, a longitudinal ex uh, extended magnetic flux rope. So from here, you can see that um, why radiative, is, uh, radiative cooling can drive radiative thermal instability to form prominence. When if you, for, for a temperature perturbation, a small reduction of temperature, um, you find a in small increase in density because of the, if you assume that the uh, hydrostatic equilibrium is, is maintained, then it will re result in an um, increase in density to maintain the same pressure. And that would, because of the n-square dependence, that will enhance the radiative cooling further. And also, this dependence on temperature of the radiative cooling, which increases with decreasing temperature, is also destabilizing, which would drive a runaway radiative cooling all the way to the bottom of this cooling curve. And for our simulations, we actually truncated this curve to, to re, uh, suppress cooling below about 70,000 Kelvin because the uh, numerical resolution limit. We are simulating a large-scale eruption in a, a domain that's of size scale of a solar radius, but in the meantime, so we, we want to um, reduce, the, um, limit the, the, cool, the pressure scale height of the coolest material so that it doesn't go below the numerical resolution. So shown here is um, where I imposed the emergence of a longitudinal extended per uh, flux rope into the helmet dome, and as a result, the uh, prominence condensation developed at the dips of the, uh, the flux rope fuel lines, and as shown in this um, AIA, SDOIA 304 channel emission, which is sensitive, peaked at uh, 80,000 Kelvin. And shown here is the evolution. So the flux rope builds up, and then condensation immediately form in the dips. And then the, the emergence stop at when the twist reaches the total twist about 1.8 wine, which is actually above the onset of the critical limit for the onset of the kink instability. But the flux will remain confined and in equilibrium for a very long time until that like, draining starts. And then the center portion start to protrude higher into higher height. And then at some point, it undergoes an ejective eruption with substantial draining of the, the prominence along the two legs of the flux rope 
as you've seen in a lot of um, prominence eruptions. So here is a CME which you actually find a associated prominence eruption. So to understand the dynamic effect of these, the prominence weight, I have carried out a comparison simulation where I suppress, where, where I drive the same emergence in both cases um, and keep all the conditions about them except that I suppress the formation of prominence condensations in the, for the case in on the right by re modifying the radiative cooling function and also artificially increase the uh, thermal conduction, which is, can stabilize this effect. Thermal conduction for, for temperature below 500 Kelvin. And as a result, here shows the simulation. You see that the, uh, the basically similar flux rope develops, but this one developed the condensations. And this one is kinkan stable already, so it quickly um, rises up in the center and then develop an eruption. Whereas this one continued to struggle, it's still running uh, for like um, 20 hours until draining starts and uh, then the center part go to a certain height for the, and it become, it loses equilibrium and erupt. So we can see that, um, so here it shows a much earlier release of magnetic energy and the, and the onset of eruption. So we see that um, the prominence weight does play an important role in suppressing the, the, king, the growth of the kink instability and affects the, the onset of eruption. So here, sh show here, we've, we find that the, uh, the prominence carrying magnetic field in the flux rope can be substantially non-force free, even despite the fact that it's low plasma beta. So shown here is the vertical, a profile, oops, a profile of vertical forces along the central vertical lines of the flux rope. Um, so you can see that in the region where there's prominence, there's a significant um, net Lorentz force due to, uh, with the imbalance between the magnetic tension and, uh, the, and the magnetic pressure gradient to support the, the, the gravi gravity force of the prominence. Oops, I can't control this. In comparison to the right, the uh, net Lorentz force is much smaller uh, with a, well, a much better balance between the magnetic tension and uh, the, the pressure gradient force. So, so the, uh, the prominence carrying field is substantially non-force free, and even though the plasma beta is in the bottom, you can see it is very low throughout the flux rope. <coughs> and we also see that the, uh, the development of the acceleration as a function of height, the, uh, the case where with prominence, it seems the height, loss of equilibrium height is significantly increased compared to the non-prominence case. So we've, basically the conclusion is that the prominence weight plays a significant role in the in the stability of the flux rope. And here, I carried out another case where I artificially induced draining. Um, so at some point, at one point during the quasi-static phase, I induced prominence draining, earlier draining by lower the pressure at the foot point of this flux rope. And so it started to drain earlier to the right here, as you see. And uh, so with a qu quicker reduction of the mass, and as a result, the center part of this is able to rise to the critical height earlier and develop a prominence eruption with substantial draining again. And well, this one is happening later, which is delayed by about six hours. And we see that um, prominence cavities forms when we put this, uh, by looking at these synthetic UV emission at various channels with the flux rope viewed above the limb, uh, nearly along this length, and we see uh, a dark cavity forming surrounding the prominence, and also there are some of them shows these kind of horn-like structures extending above the prominence, which is sometimes seen in as substructures in prominence cavities. And shown here is a horizontal cross section at the constant height of the across the prominence sheet of density and oops, I don't know why is this so hard control density and the temperature. And you see this um, dense, cool filament surrounded by a low density and relative hot region which corresponds to the cavity. Shown here are um, example, two example prominence carrying field lines and also a dome field line uh, colored in, the, in density on the left and the temperature on the right. And showing the 
right panels are high profiles along the um, dome fuel line and also from the uh, dip to the apex portion of the prominence carrying fuel lines. So the basic idea, basic things that we found is that the, the formation of the prominence condensation causes a dip, reduction of the pressure at the dip, which results in a draining of the material and also density depletion for the dip to the apex portion of the, of the magnetic field compared to the same height of the dome fuel line. So as a result, it produced this cavity structure. So, so far, all the simulations described earlier are idealized simulations to study the mechanisms. And the challenge is really to, right now, is to be able to model um, the magnetic field evolution of realistic CME events. So towards that goal, I have been working on the modeling this uh, CME uh, that takes place on December the 13, 2006 from this Delta sunspot region, um, AR10930, which so this, this buildup of this region is characterized by the emergence of a positive rotating sunspot against the southern edge of this dominant pre-existing negative sunspot. And the observation shows that there is a, um, a couple accompany this emergence of this uh, positive sunspot are negative sunspot pores towards the uh, west side. So it it seems they are the counterparts of the, uh, this emerging bipole with substantial twist being transported into the corona. So I model this, the buildup of this region with the emergence of an east-west oriented magnetic flux role. So here, the simulation is carried out in this relatively large spherical wedge domain uh, with a bound, low boundary enclosed in this white box area. And I take the, for the initial state, I take the, uh, MDI magnetogram of in, inside this region, and then I apply some smoothing so that to reduce the peak field strength to about 200 Gauss um, to avoid extremely high Elfin speed because the, the low boundary of the simulation is set at the transition region height with low density. And also, I, the region where the flux emergence is going to be imposed, I zero out the field in the flux emergence region and what, use the remaining um, normal flux distribution at the low boundary to impose, uh, to, to initialize a um, pre-existing magnetic fields with uh, ambient solar wind. And then I impose the emergence of um, this east-west oriented magnetic torus to build up the twisted magnetic flux, flux rope with the emergence pattern shown in this movie. So shown here is the uh, constructed pre-existing coronal magnetic field with um, ambient solar wind. And uh, you see that we, we find two coronal, open coronal hole regions just on the two sides of the uh, emerging active region. And then we drive the uh, emergence, flux emergence in the zero out area. And as a result, the coronal flux will build up quasi statically first. And then it undergoes, it erupts um, when we find that when the height of the flux rope reaches uh, the height, which is um, consistent with the onset of the torus instability. And we find that um, the eruption undergoes, the erupting magnetic flux rope undergoes a significant counterclockwise rotation because of the twist of the flux rope. And here on the, towards the right is a meridian cross section um, through the middle of the flux emergence region, and you can see that the uh, em erupting structure is significantly deformed as it accelerates in the ambient solar wind. And shown here is the uh, synthetic X XRT, you know the XRT emission produced by the um, simulation during the eruption. And you see this transition from a um, very, very narrow sigmoid structure toward into a, a sigmoid broad sigmoid roll of, sigmoid shaped roll of uh, erupt post flare loop structure, which is qualitatively similar to the observed XRT emission, which start from a sigmoid brightening into transition into a um, post flare loop eruption. But there are lots of qu quantitative differences, of course. 
So in summary, um, idealized MH simulations have shown that the successfully shown the transition from quasi-equilibrium to ejective eruption of a coronal flux rope through the development of the torus instability when the flux rope reaches a critical height. And current sheet tends to form um, along the QSLs during the quasi-static phase where magnetic reconnection allows the rise of the flux rope to the critical height for the onset of the torus instability and explain, can explain the formation of X-ray sigmoid um, in the pre-eruption CME source regions. And we find that prominence condensation can form in the dips of the twisted few lines of, of the emerged flux rope due to runaway radiated cooling and produce a uh, prominence cavity system with qualitative features similar to observations. And we find that the magnetic field supporting the prominence can be significantly non-force free despite low plasma beta. And the prominence weight can significantly affect the stability of the flux rope and can increase the loss of equilibrium height of the flux rope. And the draining of the prominence can initiate an eruption. So in terms of trying to model realistic events, um, so far we can only produce qualitatively the features of the observed evolution. And we find that the CME can result from for this event, the CME can result from the emergence of an east-west oriented twisted pneumatic flux rope. And the model, the evolution of the soft X-ray brightening during the eruption shows some qualitative similarities to the Hinode observation. For ongoing work um, to model, improve the simulations of uh, CME events, I'm working on imposing at the low boundary a random shear electric field that represents the effect of turbulent convection that can drive the fuel line braiding and coronal heating so as to be able to produce, to model the observed loop emissions in CME source region. As you can see earlier, we only model the uh, post flare emission pretty well, but we cannot model the uh, uh, magnetic loop structures in the pre eruption source regions. And also, we are working on developing data driven simulation of CME events by using observationally inferred electric field um, from vector magnetograms as described in the work of Kasachenko et al for driving the lower boundary flux transport. Hopefully we'll uh, produce more realistically the flux transport and the buildup of the active region magnetic field. So finally, on to, uh, again, thank, thank you, Michael, for the support and encouragement over the years at HAO um, as the director and also as a colleague. Thank you. Thank you.